All right. Alcoholics Anonymous, 12 steps exposed here. The satanic New Age psycho babble. And uh, and I mean babble by Babylon. Amen. But that's exactly what it is. But it's just a bunch of psycho babble. And I, I'm just going to show you that this isn't really too extensive, but it really shows you the differences in, in what they're teaching, their philosophies. We've already, the root is bad, we already understand, so the fruit is going to be bad. But it's important that you understand that you're able just to kill all this nonsense and be able to explain to people very thoroughly and very, very easily, hey, this is all satanic. You know, this is all, this is, these principles are satanic enlightenment principles, right, Brother Finney? Just like the, the, the contracts and everything else that churches do, 501c, it's all satanic enlightenment principles. None of it has to do with anything to do with the Word of God or the truth of the Bible or anything like that. They're all satanic principles. And the devil loves those. He, as long as you have a little bit of religious, he's okay with that as long as you're going to hell. Right? The devil's not against religion. I hope you didn't think that. He's not against religion. He's against biblical Christianity. He's against this Bible. He loves religion. Right? He has lots of them. So, Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 6. As you, theref as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Let's pray. Father, Lord, please help us. Please guide us and direct us. Use us, Father. Please use this message, Lord. Help us to understand this and just uh, put the final nail in the coffin of this uh, Alcoholics Anonymous 12-step Psycho babble, Lord, and just tell the truth about it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, you know, what does that mean to spoil you? Because the Bible says that, that beware lest any man spoil you, that or rob you of your rich treasure, the gospel, strip you of your spiritual armor, take away from you the truths and the doctrines of Christ, and divest you of your spiritual privileges and blessings, suggesting that the false teachers were thieves and robbers. And men of prey, or drive and carry you away as spoils as the innocent harmless sheep are drove, and carried away by wolves, and by the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Imitating that such as these were the heretics of those times, wherefore it became them to be upon their guard, to watch, look out, and beware, lest they, lest they should be surprised by these deceitful workers, who lay in wait to deceive, were wolves in sheep's clothing, who transformed themselves into the apostles of Christ, and therefore it became them to take heed, lest any man hurt them. Be he ever so wise and learned, or be thought ever so good, religious and sincere. Since men of this caste put on such masks and false appearances on purpose to beguile. The things by which they imposed upon weak minds are as follow. And therefore to be shunned, avoided, and rejected. Right? We are to shun, avoid, and reject. We are to, listen, it is not enough uh, to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, the Bible says. Amen. Bring them to the light. Drag these things to the light. Rip the mask off of them and tell the truth of what they really are. They're nothing but satanic philosophies of men that have been driven by an antichrist spirit, and we need to come out with it and tell the truth. No, we don't support AA. We absolutely 100% rebuke and reprove it, and we know it belongs in hell. That's where it came from. It is a wicked anti-Christ organization is all it is. Listen, anytime you have somebody that comes with a higher power, and that higher power is not the Lord Jesus Christ, it is anti-Christ, right. let it be accursed. Amen. That, it's a false gospel, and we're to let it be accursed. We are to make sure people understand the truth about it. You know how many people, how many millions of people are absolutely deceived by, by this organization, Alcoholics Anonymous? How many are absolutely deceived by AA? They think they're doing something good being a part of AA, and it's going to actually help them and everything else. It's not helping them do anything but, keep, but stay in hell. It's helping them on their road to hell. Right. Who cares if they light your way to hell? Big deal. What's good, what good is that? That's all they're doing is lighting your way into hell, showing you the path to get to hell. These are 12 steps to hell is all they are. There is nothing biblical about these except twisted scripture that is used, but they don't even use that hardly. What they use is satanic principles. So this is from, this, I'm going to take this from the opening chapter. And by the way, why in the world would Christians want to take on uh, 
a, a what, what do we need a reformers unanimous for? What do we need that for? Right. What does what a church need? What, what do, I'll tell you why. They stopped preaching repentance toward God. That's why they right. traded repentance for reformers. That they did. So they stopped teaching repentance. Listen, I don't believe in reformers unanimous. I believe in regeneration. Amen. That's what I believe. I believe if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I don't need no stupid 12-step program or whatever. How many ever steps you have in it to change a man? I got saved the old-fashioned way. Amen. Right? That's how I got saved. Came under conviction of the Holy Ghost of God, brought to my knees in repentance and faith in Christ Jesus, and made new in Christ. Amen. And there is no other gospel. Alright? Like I've said it before, I'll say it again. I do not believe in a gospel that does not change a man. I do not believe in a gospel that keeps a man dead in trespasses and sins. That keeps him needy on a program. So they have all... I mean, Reformers Anonymous is just as bad in my opinion as far as, as far as this in this way. Well, everybody's an addict. You all have something you're addicted to. So they do this so they can get counselors for their program and get them into their program, right? You're all... Everybody has an addict. So somebody says, well, I'm addicted to chocolate. Well, stop eating it. Yeah. Just stop it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Why did I have to remember that? Anyway, <laughs> but um, that is a pretty good counsel. <laughs> but, well, stop eating it, right? Don't buy it. That's so bad. All right, why don't you think of that? <clears throat> Keep my composure here. All right, but anyway, that reform, but why do we need that? Why does anybody need a 12-step program like that or, or this step program? Or, well, you know what? You know, you, you, you need to do this. And like step number three is getting saved. Wait, no, step number one is getting saved. Yeah. What are you talking about? Right. Step number one is repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Yeah. And you need Jesus. You ain't going to change without him. He changes you. It's ridiculous. So they, so this reformist gentleman takes on the same kind of, well, everybody's an addict. So somebody, so these guys are all in these Baptist churches. They're all running around. I'm watching them. And I'm like, I went through that stuff, man. They tried to put me in that program when I first got saved. After I got saved, they're like, here, you need to come to this program. You need to support it. I'm like, okay. So I come in there. And I'm like, I'm reading all this stuff. It's like, well, I ain't addicted to any of that stuff. Right. I don't need this anymore. I got, I looked at them and said, I got saved. What do you, yeah. What's all this? That's right. I got saved. Well, see, so you don't understand. Some people, they're, they, they're addicted to methamphetamines, and they're addicted to all these things. Well, Jesus Christ can save you from anything. I think what we're missing here is the understanding of repentance. You know what this wicked devil that, that worked with these other wicked devils, you know why he came up with this program? Because he didn't want to repent and recognize the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me tell you something, you little stinking rebel out there. That's the reason why you don't get right with God either. Because you don't, you don't want to quit doing your boozing and your drinking and your drugs and your fornication and your whoring around and everything else. You want to know why you don't want to do that? Because you love your sin and you don't want to recognize the God of the Bible. Come on, it ain't any, it's not any more difficult than that right there. I had a plain old preach, preacher preach to me that had no education at all, and that's exactly what he did. Man, he, I, you just love your sin. Yep. Oh, it's a disease. No, you love your sin. You are a sinner that loves your sin. And you don't love God. And if you loved God, you'd turn from your sin and trust Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because you know what? He'll, he'll, if any man, if you search for him, you'll find him if you search with him with all your heart. Right. He will be found of you. All right. So anyway, that's, that's an opening rant there. But um, i got to keep moving. But anyway, so the opening of this chapter, of his chapter 5 in his 12 steps, he kind of explains this, 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 uh, Mr. Wilson here, I think that's his name, Wilson, yeah. Not to be confused with the Dennis the Menace, Mr. Wilson. All right. I know, Lee, you were thinking that right away. Let's just dispel that myth. It's not the same guy, okay? All right. Before Lee gets started. Anyway, he says this. Now, this is his philosophy, and I want to show you this because how it is absolutely contrary to the Word of God. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to this simple program. Usually men and women are, are constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves. There are, su they are su there are such unfortunates, they are not at fault. They seem to have been born that way. They are not at fault? Really? Born that way? 
I don't know any babies that were born with a bottle of liquor in their hand. I mean, that I can think of anyway. I don't know any babies that had a fifth of Jack in their hand. I can't remember. I don't seem to remember them coming out that way. I mean, or seeing them in the delivery room that way or seeing them in the baby room that way with a fifth of Jack in their hand or, or a joint. or any, I don't remember that anyway. I haven't seen that before. Hmm. I'll tell you what, they're born. They're sinners. And they're living in sin. And they're given over to a sin nature and living in the flesh and cannot get the victory except they repent. Only Jesus gives victory. The Bible says we are guilty. It is our fault. Amen. Somebody tells you your sin's not your fault, you better run from that guy. Right. And the kindest man you'll ever meet is the man that points his finger in your face and tells you you're wicked as the devil yep. when you're living in sin. Amen. That's the nicest guy you'll ever find. That's the guy that really loves you, by the way. That guy that will tell you the truth. The one that hates you is the one that suffers sin to be upon you. You know why these pastors want to preach today about things like this and just be straight and cut it straight? Well, most of them are living in sin. But the other reason, the other reason why is because they don't, want to, they don't want you to be their enemy. Well, I would rather you hate my guts and know the truth than me deceive you for your whole life and, you not, and never confront your sin and tell you about your sin. Anyway, so he goes on to say, they are naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which depends, demands rigorous honesty. Well, the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Of course, everybody's a liar. You can't either, Wilson. You couldn't do it either. You were a liar too. He says, their chances are less than average. There are those to who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. Our stories disclose in a general way that we used to be like what happened and what we are like now. I don't know what that means either. If you have decided you want what we have and, we are, and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps. Wow. Sounds pretty creepy, actually. Very cultic sounding. At some of these, we balked, he said, some of these steps. We thought we could find an easier, softer way, but we could not. With all the earnestness at our command, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Some of us, some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas, and the result was nil until we go absolutely. So what he's saying is, is that you know, some of you may think, well, this would be some old ideas. Yeah. So this book right here, now you, can't, you, know, you, you, you need this 12-step program. Because see, you're just all you're you're all addicted to something. So you need this 12-step program. That's you have to understand. That's what the problem is. No, the problem is you're a wicked sinner. Right. right. And yep. Jesus is the answer for that. Amen. Repentance and faith in Christ. But see, that's that's what they did. They. That's how he pushed it, though. That's how he taught them. That's the mind mind control techniques that they used on them. So lay down everything you believe. See, you become addicted to a 12-step program. Is what you become addicted to. That you need this 12-step program for success. You need it to survive. Because you, you're forever an alcoholic, so you always need AA. Yep. See how that works? Yeah. Yep. You're, not free, you, you're forever an alcoholic, so you always need it. No liberty. no liberty. So they tell you to lay down all that you believe if it doesn't agree with the 12 steps and follow the 12 steps. Think about that for a minute. They are spoiling you. They are spoiling those who follow them. Satan doesn't care. Listen, by the way, Satan doesn't care if you quit drinking as long as you go to hell. Right. Anton LaVey. Listen, morality is not a problem for Satan. A biblical worldview is what Satan hates. Yep. He hates the biblical worldview. He hates biblical Christianity. He hates the word of God. That's what he hates. Right. Yep. Don't you understand? Anton LaVey didn't let his children watch, watch television. He said, what are you, crazy? I'm going to let my kids watch TV. I know what they're trying to do with that. Madonna said the same thing. I let my children watch TV. Pervert your children, but I let my children watch you. What do you think I am, an independent Baptist? I'm not letting my children watch TV. I'm joking. She didn't say that, but I'm picking on independent Baptists. She's not like those dumb Christians that let their children just sit in front of the television and watch it all day long, right? Use it as a babysitter, come back in eight hours, right? Wonder why they've got all manner of wickedness in their mind? And you think some preaching for an hour or two hours or three hours a week is going to change what's being infiltrated, what's being uh, put into their mind constantly, has, what's infiltrated their heart and their life? Come on, it's not going to happen. No? 
But hey, Anton LaVey had some morality with that. He didn't let him do that. Do you understand that? No, it's biblical. You need Christ. Anton LaVey, okay, so we talked about him. These people trade, oh, listen, this is, this is funny. Because what these people do is they trade one vice for another is all they do. They trade one devil in for another one, and the devil basically just spoils them and keeps them into, into, perpetual, into this perpetual bondage where they can never get free. Man, I'm telling you, those people are in perfect. They're always, how would you like to run around and be like, I'm an addict, I'm an addict, I'm an addict. But I'm a recovering addict, I'm a recovering addict. Really? One day at a time. Right. Right. And then, well, if you're in the, the Baptist version, you have Reformers Unanimous, then you just go outside and have a smoke for the smoke break. They've got the Baptist smoke breaks. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I am dead serious. And, and they teach you, in Reformers Unanimous, they teach you what to do. They teach, you, they teach the pastors, the people, now here's how you handle your people with this smoking thing. You explain to them, these guys are smoking crack before, so cigarettes ain't nothing. Wow. Wow. So they actually train them how to, t how to talk to their people. And they just say, because you know what, these people, they can't go that long without a cigarette. So they go out and they go, they go have their cigarettes and they come back. Now, listen, I believe that there are saved people that smoke, okay? I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to tell you that they're lost because they smoke a cigarette. But it's, it's another thing to have a, a, a Baptist smoke session, okay? A Baptist-sanctioned smoke session, okay? Do you understand the difference there? Do you get that? We're, we're going to sanction cigarette smoking at church and give you your smoke break. What is this? What is this, a, a restaurant or a or a ball game? What, are you going to have a smoke break at work? What are you talking about? And that's what they had there. And when I, when I thought that was out of line, man, they were they like, they, I was like a, I was like the rebel to them. I was like, the, I wouldn't, <laughs> imagine that. I was worse than the addict, man, smoking the cigarettes. I was like, what are you talking about? How can you support them? Okay, time for a smoke break. I'm looking around like, what in the world? Yeah, I'm like, okay, okay, this is weird, man. By the way, that wasn't AA, that was Reformers Unanimous. So I was against that program from the start. I always had a problem with it. Man, I just, it just really upset a lot of people because I did. Anyway. He says, remember that we deal with alcohol. Cunning, baffling, powerful. Without help, it's too much for us. But there is one who has all power. That one is God. What God? Find your term. May you find him now, they said. Half, measured availed, half measures availed us nothing. We stood at the turning point. We asked his protection and care with complete abandon. Is that the same God that you were tripping on acid and you had the, the vision and the God came to you and bony face talked to you? Is that the same dude? Is that the same God you serve? Is that the one? Yeah, that God. Well, they don't care, whichever one. Well, all the other ones... All the other gods besides the God of the Bible, devils, yeah, right. Satan, yeah. Lucifer, the fallen one. Yeah. All right? Here are the steps we took which are suggested as a program of recovery. Now, let me remind you of this, the God that they serve. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. That's exactly what it's about. Keeping you away from Christ. AA keeps you away from Christ. That's exactly what it does. And, all right, so step one, he says this. We're going to go through the steps here. Step one, uh, he, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Well, the Bible says you were powerless over all sin. It's not a liquor problem. It's a fallen creature that needs to be saved and made new. You are walking dead men that cannot do right. Sinners do what they do. They sin. Sinners sin. That's what they do. Amen. It's plain and simple. That's what sinners do. They sin. They live in sin. They're, they're filled with sin, and that's all they can do is sin. The answer is to repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. By the way, notice, who are you admitting this to? To all these people around you. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol. To who? Who are you admitting this to? It's just stupid. It's just psychobabble garbage is all it is. 
Step two, I'm going to keep going here, came to believe that a power, with a capital P, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Well, Satan is a greater power than man. And Satan has been known to restore people to sanity. Right? So who are they talking about? Are they talking about the God of the Bible? No, they never define him. Right. They never define him. Why? Well, because if you define, you have to, that shortens the list of who wants to be there when you start talking about the Bible. That's right. There are a lot of powers greater than ours out there in the world. Witches try to tap into power greater than theirs. Devils were what fueled Bill and gave him the, and, and give him the same info to follow Loyola's spiritual exercises. Same thing. What does the Bible says? Satan has power. Revelation 13, 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power yep. and his seat and great authority. Right. Satan has that power, has a seat and great authority. The Antichrist will have that power, seat, and great authority given him by his father, the devil. Right. And the lust of his father he will do. Right? right? And what's going to happen? He's going to murder. Because his father is Satan. And he's a murderer from the beginning and a boat not in the truth, right? A liar and a murderer. But this is the power that Bill is talking about. It's wicked. And it's getting power from spirits and not regeneration by the Holy Ghost. Changing you, completely changing you. And making you a new creature in Christ. Step number three. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. See? Notice those last words, as we understood him. Not as he's revealed in the scriptures, that's right. So when you say as we understood him, what are you saying? You're saying the God that I form in my own mind. Yeah, the flying spaghetti monster, that's right. That's, that's, that's what you have there. You don't have a God, the God is defined in the Bible, the word of God. You have your own God that you've made up. What is that? That's humanism. All it is is humanism. As we understood him, well, but the Bible talks about our understanding in Proverbs 3, 5. It says, turn there, Proverbs 3, 5. We're going to read a couple verses from there. The Bible tells us to do the opposite of what Bill said to do. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. Be not wise thine own eyes. Listen, you don't have the right to define God as you want to. You define him as he's in this book, as he's been revealed to us in the word of God. Your higher powers is Satan, is who it is. God, the God of the Bible is defined in the scriptures, and you are, you are not allowed to worship him in any other way. The Bible says in John chapter 4, verse number 23, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. You don't worship God your own way and after your own understanding, but after what the Bible has revealed about who God is. This is the revelation of God. This is the entire revelation of God. It's everything that you need, what God wanted us to have. There isn't anything that was left out of this book that God wanted you to have. Amen. It is complete and whole. Amen. And perfect, infallible, Amen. inspired. Right. Bill, the founder of AA, rejected the God of the Bible and the words of the living God and turned to spirits and rebelled against God. And rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Yep. Right. Stubbornness. Right? He said he formed a God of his own choosing. So then many in AA turned to Allah, turned to Satan, turned to a rock, yep. turned to anything. It doesn't matter. You just have to have a higher power. What is he teaching you? Satanism. Just yeah. focus on this object of a higher power and just keep that in your mind and just focus on that. And submit yourself to that higher power. You're submitting to devils when you do that. Amen. If you're not worshiping the God as defined in this Bible, you are not a true worshiper of God. Right, right. You are a worshiper of the Antichrist. Right, yeah. You are against God. And God hates AA. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely right. hates it. And I hate it too. God will not share his glory with anyone. God will not share his you're not gonna call you're not gonna substitute the God of the Bible for something else and try to use some principles and mix some principles with satanic principles. Right. That's how they do their automatic writing, by the way, and other things they do, because one of their steps is to turn their will over to a higher power. 
any higher power. That's right. What does the Bible say about that? About principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places? We're to have our armor on it because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. Step number four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Fearless moral inventory. <laughs> and I, I just, this is my question, based on what? What is the basis of morality? Who has the final say of what morality is? What's the final authority of what morality is? What's the final authority of right and wrong? Right, is it the Pope? What is it? Is it the Bible? Is it your feelings? It's the God you made up in your own mind? That's, that's what's your reality. So in essence, you are the height, and what your understanding is, is what morality is. So morality for one, in, in Islam, is to, it's okay to rape boys and girls. Right. That's your, that's, your, that's your morality. That's the basis of your morality. Right? That's what they teach. Muhammad had a nine-year-old wife that he consummated the marriage with. I really have a desire to nail Islam sometime soon and just really tell the truth about, about that. I know I've talked about it in the past before, but really deal with that subject. We might do it on the radio, but just deal with that subject and really... Nail it because there's a lot of there's misconceptions on both sides of what's right to do in America with everything that's going on. You have the ultra liber, libertarian side that thinks we'll just let them all flood in. It's okay, just flood them in over the border and just let everything happen. And it's okay, nothing will happen because they're peaceful people. They just want liberty. Blah, 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 okay, and it's it's okay. Let me tell you, you're stupid. Look at how Muhammad took over nations. That is going way too far. You don't go that far. You don't go that far with things. It's ridiculous. Anyway, but that's another story for another day. But anyway, so whose basis of morality? Where, do, where does morality, who says what's right and who's wrong? If Satan your higher power, then his morality is anything goes. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's Satan's morality. If it's Allah, then we can marry nine-year-old girls, right? Consummate the marriage. If it's the U.S. government, if it's the United States government, then we can murder babies through abortion. Fornicate out of wedlock, have multiple partners, engage in homosexual practices, and pretty soon bestiality is going to be fine. Yep. So, what's your basis of morality? Is this too real? I don't know. It's just to me. It's yeah, just. It's just. Yeah. If it's not the word of God, what do you, what do you base it off of? Yeah, right. Right. It's their satanic principles. There's no standard of morality. There's no absolutes, and that's where these devils like. They don't like absolutes. Yeah. They hate absolutes. They absolutely hate them. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What does the Lord say? I, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Your heart can fool you. And without the standard of holiness and morality that's found in the Word of God, and one that's based off of biblical principles, a standard of holiness, righteousness, separation, and God's law, then you can easily be fooled by a pseudo-worldly morality that whatever is accepted by pop culture is okay. And that's what's happened today. Look at Bill. He left liquor and was a fornicator and died of emphysema, a cigarette addict. His heart deceived him. He traded one addiction for another and died and went to a devil's hell. That's right. Psalm 139, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. God needs to be your source of truth and morality. The word of God. Only the Lord and his law can properly show you who you really are. And it will not allow you to escape the truth. You can ignore it, but the truth is still there. Psalm 19, verse number 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord are, is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. He, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Amen. That's our basis right there. That's what the law of the Lord does. That's what the word of God does. AA, 
whatever whatever pop culture says is okay. Why? Because they don't go against anything. They don't want to rock the boat with anything. Just stop drinking. That's all we care about. You can be a fornicator. You can do whatever you want to do, but just stop raping. Yep. Yep. By the way, there's a lot of these these people, these young ladies, these ladies go into that program, and there's older men that are and other men that are that are mentoring them, mentoring them, and they end up sleeping with them and seducing them. That's what, and controlling them and mind controlling them. It's actually called, it's actually, some of the people call it step 13. Think about that. Step 13. I know. Pretty bad, isn't it? Step number five, admitted to God. Which God? The God that he formed in his own pocket, the one he made up in his own mind, right? It's like he made him out of Plato. Oh, this is God. And then let me take some acid, and I'll get visions, and that'll be God. My Plato God. Yeah, I am mocking him. Just like Elijah mocked him. Amen, Amen. I am mocking them. Amen. They deserve to be mocked. Yeah. Bunch of wicked right. devils. Amen. Yeah, God will have them derision. That's right. right. Get laugh at their calamity. Amen. Admitted to God to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. It's wonderful. No, really, you didn't. And again, what God? And how do we really know what determines right and wrong? What's the standard? Where's your basis of right and wrong? Only if it hurts somebody else. Well, it's Ignatius Loyola's principle, so hey, Ign Ignatius liked it. Step number six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. See, they, they're ignorant of how the Bible, how God works. God doesn't work that way. The only way they can be removed is through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, marvel not that you must be born again. That's the only way. You, and by the way, you don't have defects. You are completely fallen. Do you understand that? You don't have defects. You are a fallen, wicked sinner. You are a sloppy, wicked drunk. That used to be how preachers preached. Now what do they say? Oh, you have a problem with this? You don't have a problem with that. You're a wicked drunk. Right. You are a problem. So I say on the street to them. They come by all drunk and they're and they're getting they're getting arrogant and they start getting and they start yelling at you. And they start to say, "You're just a wicked drunk that needs to repent of your sins, be born again by the Spirit of God, believe the gospel." They might tell you down at AA, "You got a problem." Yeah, you got a problem. All right, it's a big one. It's called the God of the Bible, and He's going to crush you if you don't get saved. You're going to die with that booze in your hand and open your eyes up in hell. That's what you're going to do because you're a wicked drunkard. We don't need that straight speech. I'm telling you, men, it's so straight today. You don't even understand how much we need that straight speech today. We need to be able to thunder out the truth. It's like going to, going to Planned Parenthood and looking at them and saying, look, look, this is what you're doing. You see this? I mean, why don't you like to see this? This is what you're doing. That shouldn't be a problem for you. This is what you're supporting, America. This is what you're paying for. This is what you agree with. That's what you're okay with when you say you're pro-choice. This is what democracy looks like. Right? Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. That's what mob rule looks like. Right? Right? When a bunch of Jesuits and wicked Jews up there at the, at the Supreme Court decided that it was okay to murder, that, that that's not a life anymore, it was okay to murder those babies? And everybody agreed with it and was fine with it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it is. You need straight speech today. You need to snap people out, out, out of their coma that they're in. Amen. You need to wake them up and tell them straight, no, you're a baby murderer. No, you didn't have an abortion. You murdered a baby. You just murdered a child. You murdered a real-life baby inside of your womb. You murdered it. You killed it. Not like some of these guys. What are they saying, Brother Nate, now? Uh, what's that guy's name? Vadi? And those guys saying, we need to go in incrementations or incremental steps or whatever, and we need to not call it murder and not try to do that and just try to reach it once. Well, let me tell you something. It is murder, and you got something wrong with your head if you can't figure that out. And you know what? If that's really what you believe, you better get on your knees and beg God for forgiveness, because that is wicked right there. You tell people the truth. You are murdering babies. 
I'm not going to change my speech to make it flowery, to make you accept it. I don't care. I, I don't care if you like it. It's true. You're, I don't like you murdering babies. God hates it. And you are bringing judgment on our nation because you are murdering babies. And all you men that stay home and won't do anything about it or won't stand up against it and won't tell the truth about it, you are helping them. Amen. Yep, that's right. There ought to be a thousand men surrounding that Planned Parenthood. At least. Tell me how many Baptists are in this area, how many Bible believers are in this area, and they won't even go out there. Give me a break. You won't even stand out there, hold up a sign, preach the word of God, and warn these wicked sinners of their murder. Anyway, I don't know how I got off on that, but I got to keep going. We got to get some people baptized here pretty soon. By the way, all this is is, by the way, he says that, that we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. That's the only, the only way that you can have those removed is, is realizing you're dead in trespasses and sins, and there is no way of victory outside of a new nature in Christ. This is nothing more than trying to reform in one area while the rest of your life stays a total wreck and disobedient to God. Yep. It's a form of work salvation. Yep. That's all it is, is work salvation. Yep. It's trying to earn your way to victory. You can't earn your way to victory. You need to be saved. Amen. Yep. Step seven, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Who? Satan? Well, they don't care. Satan, Allah, um, Buddha, the chair, their mom, Oprah, their common ancestor. Yeah, it doesn't matter who it is, right? Whatever they're serving is God. Booze, yeah, yeah, exactly. God doesn't remove anything until a man is born again and changed and made a new creature. Amen. Step eight, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Well, you know what? I mean, I understand the sentiment there, but listen, Zacchaeus made amends after he recognized Jesus as Lord. Yeah, that's right. right? He made amends after he did. He wanted, he wanted to right the wrongs after he acknowledged Jesus Christ. Right. Lord, I give everything. He said like, four times. I restore people four times. He said, I'll give it all. Four times what I, if I've ever taken from any man, I'll why? What did Jesus say? Salvation has come to this house. Right? It was fruits be for repentance. That's right. He repented. Amen. He yep. recognized Jesus as Lord and said, I've been doing wrong. I need to do right. Yep. Amen. See, how easy, see how that works? Yep. Man, you don't think this guy was addict, wasn't addicted to making money? Yep. He was addicted to making money. He was a tax collector, right? He collected the money. He, man, he, made, he was robbing people. He was stealing from people. Yep. He was a thief. How about the Apostle Paul, right? Lord, what, what, what wilt thou have me to do? What did he do? He served the Lord the rest of his life. Not because he had to work for it, but because he was already saved. Lord, Paul didn't say, well, I think I, I just, I need it. I need a 12-step program because I can't stop killing people. I really want to kill people still. I just really want to kill people. Right? No. I really want to keep killing people. I need a 12-step program for this. No. It's called regeneration. Made new. Step nine. Made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Same as the above. How does, anyone, how does any of this cure you from desire to drink booze and change who you really are? It doesn't. It's like therapy. You just keep going through this therapy and this, this, this psychobabble and therapy to try to fix things. You're not going to fix anything right. like that. You need to be changed. Step 10, continue to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Again, basic character issues. When you're wrong, you should want to do right. I mean, that's just, baby, even before you're saved, people know that. If you do something wrong, you're supposed to make it right. I mean, that's, that doesn't see, free you from anything. This isn't going to change a man, though, and make him free from liquor. Only Jesus can do that and grant eternal life. It's not enough to be delivered from liquor, but we must be delivered from the bondage of sin and made new in Christ. Otherwise, you're going to go back to that. You're going to be hogs and dogs, right? You're going to go back to the, back to the vomit. You're going to roll around the mud again after you get clean, right? Step 11, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God. Uh-oh. This is that meditation here. As we, underst as we understood him. Praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. 
Again, it's his new age contact with God, like the mystics and like Ignatius, Ignatius Loyola did with his spiritual exercises. And remember, what Bill did use his LSD for this contact with a God, and it was nothing to do with the God of the Bible. So he's like, I'm going to meditate and, and put myself in a trance and, you know, get knowledge from God. Gnosis, right? Again, a lot of druggies use, use that drugs to try to get closer to God, the higher power. It's no different than Crowley and other Satanists, Theosophists, Ascended Masters, Helena Blavatsky, and many others. Witches use drugs to contact spirits and modern mystics today that are popular and are contacting spirits to do the same thing. Sure, spirits and devils will help you quit drugs and liquor. Why not if it will keep you deceived and in hell, not knowing the power of God? One of the guys said this, one of the biographers of the movement said this about the, the, the AA Big Book 11th Step Discussion at page 85. He said this, references to meditation, prayer, asking God to direct our thinking, asking God for inspiration and intuitive thought or a decision, and morning meditation, harken back to the, the Akron days when Bill and Dr. Bob and Ann had quiet time with scripture reading and prayer and also seances. Reading, prayer, and don't forget seances. And seances. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit, right? Yeah, I think so. That's right. That's right. The emphasis upon religious experience, experiences rather than truth and the power of such experiences to convince recipients that they have been touched by God is a common denominator in most cults. Mormonism calls it the burning in the bosom, for example, and especially in the occult. Uh, Dave Hunt said this in Occult Invasion. So anyway, basically, he's saying he, he went there, he, they added the seances to their prayer sessions. I guess that probably helped them read and understand the Bible better when they were just having seances as well, contacting spirits and using the Ouija board. Yep. Candles, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps. Wait a minute, so these 12 steps gave you a spiritual awakening? Well, I agree with you, because you got a, you got a black awakening there from a bunch of devils, right? right? And you're able to have an awakening, and you're able to contact spirits, and now you're a different person. Yep. You're right, you're more devil-possessed than you ever were. Yep. And you follow these 12 steps. Yep. So these are just 12 steps indoctrinating you into the occult, as all these 12 yep. steps do. It's an initiation, right? That's all it is. Do you realize you have millions of people that are being initiated with these things? Yeah, having their Kundalini awakening, right? Having had a, yeah, bringing the baby up, right? Bringing the dragon out, right? Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Seances? <laughs> what spiritual awakening with devils, not the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible is a God of absolutes. He's not okay with you taking satanic New Age principles and contacting familiar spirits on LSD with your Jesuit mystic friend. Yeah. <laughs> if I got everybody in there, I don't know if I did. And Adolus yeah. Huxley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just, je, this is a weird stuff. Your Jesuit mystic technique to talk to spirits and gain some victory over some vices to be possessed with devils your whole life. The devastation wrought, now this is from uh, Dave Hunt, the devastation wrought by Alcoholics Anonymous founded in 1935 and the spread of its 12 steps has been enormous. One can scarcely keep track of the many 12-step groups AA has spawned. Adult Children's of Alcoholics, Debtors Anonymous, Emotions Anonymous, <laughs> Gamblers Anonymous, Sex Addicts Anonymous, Shoplifters Anonymous, and even Fundamentalist Anonymous for recovery from fundamentalism. <laughs> Well, that one might be... No, never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> one could be necessary. But <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a joke. <coughs> Fundamentalist Anonymous for Recovery from Fundamentalism. In a book that every Christian ought to read, 12 Steps to Destruction by Martin and Deidre Bog Bobgan point out thousands of groups across America and most codependency recovery programs utilize the 12 steps in one way or another. Wow. Satan is not an atheist. He knows that God exists, and he wants to take his place and to be worshipped by mankind. To the, that end, he encourages belief in a higher power in order to turn men from the true God to himself. Satan knows that all people have a sense of alienation from God and that the Holy Spirit is wooing mankind to himself. What better way for Satan to prevent such reconciliation with the true God through Christ than to effect a pseudo-reconciliation with a counterfeit higher power? 
And then Apostate Magazine, Christianity Today, Tim Stafford says this, The 12 steps are Christian. Yet none of the 12 steps contain a mention of Jesus Christ, much less of the gospel. How then could they be Christian? Even Stafford admits that Wilson never pledged his loyalty to Christ, never was baptized, never joined a Christian church. The Christian church, however, has joined AA. Think about that. You see, we... See, we're always expected, whenever there's compromise, it's always expected for us to lay down our principles to work with them. Well, we're not going to do that Amen. by the grace Amen. of God. Amen. We're not going to lay down what we believe in old to be true in this book Amen. to get along with anybody. If you don't want to get along with us, that's okay. We'll concentrate on getting along with each other. We need to do that anyway. Amen? All right? Nothing is compro now he says over this is this is Christian today. Moreover, how can how can Stanford say that nothing is compromised in using them the twelve step program? Ten such comments are typical of uh, such comments are typical of Christianity today's long standing record of theological ecumenicism, compromise, and outright support of error. Stafford also approves of twelve step programs patterned after AA, which have come into the church into the church. These guys are all Protestants. He attempts to justify this posture by suggesting that the, that the church's adapt, adaption of AA's methodologies involved re-Christianizing the 12 steps. Can we just, that's like we do for Halloween. Can we re-Christianize re Halloween? Can we Christianize paganism a little bit? Can we just do that a little bit? Let's just, we already did that with Christmas, right? With the tree. Let's, uh, let's Christianize paganism. Can we baptize paganism? Oh, Constantine already did that. Yep. Yeah. Can we do that? Trunk or treat? Right? Yeah, harvest party. <laughs> That's terrible. If the 12 steps, as Stafford says, are Christian, what need could there be to re-Christianize -re them? If, as is this case, they embody concepts designed to be acceptable to anyone, including atheists, then to speak of re-Christianizing them is a delusion. The truth is that AA's 12 steps are anti-God and anti-Christian. Yep. To adapt them into the church is wicked. Yep, yep, yep. The embrace of any form of the 12 steps within the churches implies that God, the Bible, and Jesus Christ offer no solution, or at least not an adequate one, for the sins of drunkenness and other addictions. And that AA has at last filled the void. Yet thousands of churches across America are doing precisely that. Willow Creek Community Church of South Barrington, Illinois, pastored by Bill Hybels, is a particularly instructive case inasmuch as it has been called the most influential church in North America. And they model the model of the church for the next century. In an exhaustive study of the Willow Creek phenomenon for his Ph.D. dissertation, G.A. Pritchard writes this. One of the first staff members I spoke with proudly told me how more than 500 individuals met at the church each week in various self-help groups. Alcoholics Anonymous, Emotions Anonymous, Sexual Anonymous. Upon investigation, I discovered that these programs were not actually the churches. Although many church attendees were participating in the programs, the actual meetings were being run according to outside organization policies. One of the requirements of these organizations was that individuals could not evangelize or otherwise teach other participants about God. Wow. Wow. And we don't want to get into doctrinal confrontations. It, yeah, yeah, we don't get into the gospel. In Scripture, we are commanded to earnestly contend for the faith, that was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. How can we be tolerant of promoting higher powers that take the place of God? Right. In supporting, support of the tolerance, he recommends, Stafford says, Christian AA groups can express their convictions. What convictions? That Jesus is the higher power? That is neither allowed nor is it biblical. Right. AA's concept of a higher power is pagan. It would therefore be an insult to Christ to associate it in, it in any way. Amen. Christ is not a power, but a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stafford notes that Christians may not say anything that would undermine the pluralistic assumptions of the group by suggesting that others' views of God are misguided. That is like my wife, went when she was a little girl, went to Christian school, and you weren't allowed to talk about doctrine. Why? Well, because the pastor hired people that were outside of the Baptist faith, and they, were, and they worked in the church, so you couldn't get in doctrine. She start, teachers started talking about tongues, and I, naturally with my, my wife, and, and they don't believe in that because they believe the Bible there. Boy, we had some problems. They had some problems there. Amen. That's, that's what happens when you compromise like that. So this com commended tolerance... This commended tolerance has its limits, and in actual fact, intolerant of the gospel. AA is intolerant of the gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
What Stafford really means, and this is all that AA allows, is that a Christian, like a Mason, is free to say that Jesus is or is a or his higher power, but not the higher power. And what does it say? It's Antichrist, let it be accursed. Right. You're denying Jesus came in the flesh. You're denying that Christ, tabernacle of the flesh, and Christ is God that came here in the flesh. You are Antichrist, then. AA is Antichrist. Plain and simple, that's what it is. An official AA publication says Alcoholics Anonymous does not demand that you believe anything. AA tread innumerable paths in their quest for faith. If you don't care for the one I've suggested, you'll be sure to discover one that suits you. You can, if you wish, make AA itself your higher power. It could not be clear that any false god will do. Hell for eternity becomes the cost of sobriety in this life then. That's right. This issue is not whether an alcoholic receives some help. There are fantastic testimonies that change life through everything from hypnosis. Right? You can get hypnotized and people stop smoking. Right? I've heard of that many times. Hypnotized. All right. Psychotherapy to an alleged UFO abduction. I saw a bright light, saw a UFO, and it changed me forever. The tragic truth, however, is that temporal help through AA's higher power leads the recipients away from Jesus Christ and eternal salvation. Moreover, AA gives very little real help, even in the overcoming alcohol. Christian groups which rely solely upon Christ have a better record. Like so many other groups that have fallen into the occult, AA reflects the mentality with which John Wimber infused the vineyards. If it works, then go for it! Yes, AA works for some people, sometimes. The Bible, however, warns against seeking help from false gods. The consequences are tragic in the destruction of lives in this present world, as well as eternally. Listen to this, Exodus chapter 23, verse number 24. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them. Thus saith the Lord in Jeremiah 10, 2, Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. We're not to learn their ways. We're not to right. follow their ways. The fact is, however, that the theory which led to the founding of AA, that alcoholism is a disease, is false. It's just a false teaching, flat out. Many people have written about this. I'm not even going to go into that, because it really doesn't matter, because the authorities of Scripture, many even professors have, read, have written about this, and said there's no way that that's a disease. The, this myth, now widely advertised and widely accepted, is neither helpful, compassionate, nor scientifically valid. As for the alleged efficient, efficiency of AA and other recovery programs, one Dr. Feingarrett says that treatments of, for alcoholism as a disease have no measurable, measurable impact at all. The author of Diseasing of America, Addiction Treatment Out of Control, agrees and offers research to show that multitudes have been persuaded by brainwashing that they have the disease of alcoholism and that the overall result has been to impede the normal recovery which otherwise would take place. And this is from a secular point of view, right? Amen. So anyway, there's no proof that any of those, all it is is satanic philosophies, calling down devils, putting yourself in trances, taking different drugs. Now, obviously, they don't condone taking those drugs today. Because legally they can't. But, um, but what they do condone is, is this meditation and this finding this higher power. All of this against scripture. All of this antichrist. All 12 of their steps are 12 steps that will lead you to hell. They are initiations into the occult and they lead you to a devil's hell. That's exactly what they will. If you need victory, you get it in Christ Jesus. You repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and he will make you victorious. Because Christ has already defeated sin, death, and hell. Amen. And he will, and he, and the, and we have the power of the resurrection. Amen. The Bible says that we have that power. You know, don't follow men's cunningly devised fables. Don't follow. This is. It's been proven today that AA and those other light groups that model themselves after have nothing but satanic principles attached to them. They, they are all they are is standing in the stead to replace the gospel. Right. They want to replace the God. Why? Because Satan knows that this is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Satan knows it. And any type of religious form he's fine with as long as you don't get saved by that gospel right. and that book. Yeah. That's what he doesn't want. He wants you away from this word. He wants to draw you away from Christ, to take you away from the truth of it. So he'll give you victory in an area of your life. Listen, Satan has made a lot of, a lot of men rich so they stayed away from God. Yep. Satan has cured people of a lot of things so they stayed away from God. 
There's a lot of witch doctors out there that can cure people of broken arms and all kinds of stuff. Overseas, missionaries tell stories all the time about those that people would go to the witch doctor, they had a broken arm or a broken leg or something, and they healed it. Those same witch doctors would get saved, and after they were saved, they couldn't heal anymore. Why? Because they were using the power of devils to do those things. That's why. All right, understand something, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We know what the battle is, and we know what the truth is. Take out your sword and fight and show people the truth. Amen. And war against these, these, these foolish programs, these vain philosophies and traditions of men. Father, Lord, we thank you for your words. Thank you for the truth of them, Lord. Help us to always be at war against Satan and his kingdom. And help us to uh, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Lord, bless the baptisms to follow. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And amen. amen.